Hi, welcome to Idiot Lex. This week, we're discussing the rewinds. This month in 1981, Blondie uh, dropped Rapture, the first rap video played on MTV. I know she had Five Five Freddy in it, which that came out of a, a party with Warhol. We have a couple of great VMA moments from the past. Busta Rhymes presenting with Martha Stewart, Culture Clash. Absolutely, she, I think she had just got out of jail. And it made people laugh so hard. Yes, yeah, yeah. and it was just an odd pairing, and she still have a relationship with hip hop to this day, doing the uh, cooking mm -hmm. show with Snoop Dogg. When do we add the, um... The eggs. No, nah, the, um... The stuff? Yeah. Well, later. Okay. Later. <laughs> From 1997 to now, 20 years later, Martha Stewart is still holding it down to hip hop. And of course, we had the uh, infamous Kanye West moment uh, walking on the stage, interrupting Taylor Swift in 2009. And uh, it's eight years later, and that won't die at all. At all. You know, she just dropped a new album, and it's, it's just fuel, yeah. Yeah, she's coming for Kanye and um, Kim in a major way. But anyway, uh, hopefully, they're working out. I'm sure they're going to do a song together down the road. Who knows? Um, also, what happened in uh, hip-hop history this time, LL Cool J pushes FUBU into the Gap commercial in 1997. He was doing a commercial for Gap. I'm pretty sure he was excited. But at the same time, urban fashion was uh, com you know, coming on strong. And FUBU, which kind of led the way of that, LL Cool J wore the hat, was do rapping in the commercial, and actually mentioned FUBU by name in the commercial. And so it was like a two-for-one deal. Uh, at the time, you know, LL Cool J so legendary, Gap let it go, and FUBU just took off from there. So that's another major thing that happened. I would say uh, five years ago, 2012, Nas dropped the album Life Is Good. Uh, it was the first album in hip-hop from a mature perspective. He was dealing with his divorce, uh, you know, his tax uh, returns, issues that he had, issues that he had been having in the industry, trying to tell people to wake up and mature about things. And uh, five years later after that album, Jay-Z dropped 444, which um, everyone looked at as, you know, the mature album for hip-hop. And oddly enough, the same guy, No ID, who had had a major hand in producing Life is Good, produced the entire 44 album. So it's funny that those two albums are very similar in ways, and the same uh, executive producer was over both albums. And from that, we had uh, Young TV Raps debuted in 1989. So Blondie dropped her video in 1981. It took eight years later for, you know, four and went happy. And rest in peace, Ted Demi, uh, who played a major role in getting Young TV Raps put on air. And from there on out, hip hop was never the same. The rock music was number one music at the time with the launch of Young TV Raps. And of course, we uh, talked about video music box with. Um, Ralph McDaniels, uh, yeah, music uh, video box with Ralph McDaniels. We talked about that, but your TMV rap came with Five Five Freddy as the host, Ed Lover and Dr. Dre, and rappers were able to come on air, talk about themselves, the personalities, yeah. the music videos. So it was always a format of the studio versus the clips, right? Yes. So Fat Five Freddy would be out places, mixing it up with people, and those guys would be in the studio playing the videos and doing the Ed Lover dance. Absolutely. And, I still love this dance. Oh, yeah. Little, 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 little. <laughs> yeah, the air rubber dance. And so we're thinking about that, you know, um, as we take a look at a rewind, we you know, just want to always talk about important things that led us to the day and with hip hop being the number one driving force in music globally. I mean, I think it started with the Run DMC era and Beastie Boys when, you know, they sold three million albums. And now we are looking at people like Eminem and Nelly and all those guys who went off to have you know, Diamond Record Sales and Outkast. But it's all that combination. So when you have high culture, guys like Warhol, who really have this ability to affect money and power and coming all the way down through, you know, things like Fresh Prince of Bel Air debuting in 1990. It's like all these drips in the bucket where you're getting it in the sitcom format, you're getting it on the MTV format, you see it in fashion, you see it in high art then it, co it combines all that into, you know, taking over. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, oddly enough, almost everything that kind of came out of hip-hop, <laughs> it's kind of crazy to even say, but uh, uh, that what hip-hop became and what it touched was all in the Blondie video. I mean, when you think about it, Five Five Freddy is mentioned in the song, he's in the video. Yeah. He became the host of Young TV Raps down the mm -hmm. road. He directed 
music videos for Nas. He directed music video. I mean, so many hip hop videos. Five Five Freddy. If you don't know who he is, do look him up. He is an icon in the world of uh, hip hop and art. He was the one that uh, was with Blondie, Andy Warhol, Basquiat, Basquiat, all those guys, and merged that together. And now, years later, Basquiat's paintings are going for you know millions of dollars. You know, a lot of people are you know like you know touching on, speaking to the fact that they had a relationship with him. You look at Madonna, things of that nature, a lot of other artists. So it's those people are still running around. Blondie is still out there. She was in Portland uh, last year at the festival, and so. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited about, you know, looking at Rewind and excited about rewinding this in a couple years to see what's taking place now because there's so much stuff that's going on in hip hop that I think we're going to be talking about down the road.